time for another coffee with Kilroy. Or what I like to call beverage in a book. My beverage, well, coffee. Yours, well, that's up to you. And I hope it's something you like. The book is On to Moscow, 1941, World War II Solitaire, an original book game by Mike Wiley, Sean Cook, Grant Wiley, published by Worthington, Worthington Publishing. This is a book game, requires two dice, a pen, and a sense of adventure to play. Well, folks, this is the latest in the Worthington book game series, which I have been covering. Uh, that, and along with a lot of other book games, I, I have to admit, they're the ones that kind of got me started into looking into this whole genre of war games and book games, and, and I've kind of gotten off the beaten path into choose your own adventure games as well, but you can catch up on all that in my uh, on my pay playlist down below. But um, this all started back with Bismarck Solitaire, uh, which was, I think, their first uh, book game in this series. And then since then, they've come up with several others. I mean, you have Bismarck Solitaire. Um, one of the more recent ones is Gettysburg, Waterloo, Braveheart, which covers you know multiple battles, and now on to Moscow. So we finally got up to uh, World War II. And um, one thing about these games are that they're available on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Um, Worthington was not kind enough to send me one. Now I'm not calling them out. I, I know they don't even have the review copies in yet. I don't think this is this is that fresh. I mean, the ink is is still wet a little bit on this. So, uh, but uh, this is a little bit different than the other ones, which is good. I mean, they they're um, they're exploring this space. Let's just say that. Um, this one is dealing with uh, World War II, the offensive in Moscow. Uh, as you see here in the back of the book, the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941 had the goal of ending the war in one massive quick campaign. They believe Leningrad, Moscow, and southern Russia could be occupied within four to six weeks, bringing the war to a close, thus altering the course of World War II. In December 1941, the harsh Russian winter ended the campaign with the Axis armies on the outskirts of Leningrad and Moscow, near but ever so far from achieving their goal. Now you command and the decision are, decisions are yours. On to Moscow, Solitaire has 25 game plays. That's kind of consistent with the other books. Uh, it is a World War II strategic game that highlights the Axis campaign waged in the Soviet Union from June through December 1941 and the other theaters of war that influenced that campaign. All you need to provide is two dice, a pin, and a sense of adventure to play. So uh, one of the some of the, this game is a little bit different than the other ones. Um, the other ones, uh, except for Bismarck, which was kind of a naval search game, the, the other games were what I kind of call static map games or static play, which are very similar to their Freedman's Farm or their Chancellorville games, where you kind of have a position on the uh, of the battle, of a specific battle. Um, let's use an example here from Braveheart here. So uh, this is Bonnockburn. So you have a static position, and then th they're going to roll an AI, uh, which is not shown here, but there's going to be uh, roll the dice and figure out what the uh, uh, your opponent is going to do. And then you're going to react to that with your actions or vice versa. But you're going to re react to that with your actions and you're limited on your actions uh, and you have so many turns with which to accomplish it. And then when you lose forces, you mark them off. Uh, and so it's basically a static situation that you're, you know, basically marking off stuff as time goes on. And that's what's left over of your uh, position. That's what the majority of these other games, the Waterloo, Gettysburg, uh, Braveheart uh, is like. Bismarck's a little bit different with its uh, more of a naval search game. This one, uh, or theater game, this one is is different yet. This is strategic. The other ones were tactical. They were battles. 
that you were looking at. This one is uh, more strategic in nature. You're covering the entire uh, Russian front uh, in early 41 or in, in into 41. And you're going to have different theaters here. You have like the Arctic Theater, the Finnish uh, front, Northern Front, Central Front, Southern Front, Great Britain, and Arctic and North Africa or Middle East. These are some of the uh, regions or theaters that co are going to affect this front. Um, you have a turn track and uh, there's reserves. So th there's, a, there's a, a different gameplay here than what we saw in their, tr in their to date uh, the mainstream of war game books. So let's have a, let's have a sip. You don't have to sip if you don't want to. No peer pressure there at all, but I needed a little bit of a sip. So let's get into this book and see what we have here. Um, as with the, uh, Worthington books, they are, you know, landscape, uh, in nature because that's the way the maps are placed. So even the rules and table of contents are that way. Uh, you've got your rules start on page two. A detailed example of play starts on seven. So you're looking at about, what, five pages of rules. So not a whole lot there. There's different uh, scenarios here. It looks like that uh, maybe these are the complexity of the scenarios, maybe. So you have a one star up to a five star here. I believe that's the case. I don't know. I just got this in the mail from Amazon and cracked it open. Um each of the five Russian bot strengths or group levels. So yeah, this is the bot strength is, is those stars there. Okay. Then you have the rules proper, uh, which again are landscape format. Uh, the introduction, game summary, talking about the game board there. Game board and action charts. Uh, and this is again what the AI will be doing. And then you get the game components. The armies and and you're, you're you're gonna have kind of this point to point type situation on the map or the strategic map you've got reserves you're gonna be marking off or keeping track there your different theaters that you have there and then you have your turn sequence of play going over that um, and that continues on so you have these two pages here or that Resolving the Axis player advance attempts. And then you've got um, how to win victory. And there's going to be victory points talking about how you would, would uh, like if you occupy Moscow, Leningrad, or Sestopol, or um, the campaign goals, or the Arctic Theater, or North, or, uh, North Africa Theater. There's all kinds of different. Uh, the, the, you get deduction of points depending on what the allies are doing in these other the, uh, theaters, I should say. You have your victory point scores here. Again, this is a solitaire game, so you're measuring yourself up against the AI or the bot. And here's a detailed example of play, which I think is good for this book. I mean, their, their games aren't that complex. Their, their war game books or their book games are not super complex. Um with maybe Bismarck being more the, the most complex just because it's different than the other ones, the other what I call like static map games. This one is looks a lot different than any of those games that they've done to date. So uh, this example of play is something that I'm definitely going to read over and use because I'm going to need it uh, to understand what all these different fronts are and how they interact together. So it looks like there's a, quite a bit more more there there in this uh, game here. <laughs> kind of rhymed there. Uh, so here's your uh, balanced attack. So this is going to be the Russian AI, what they do. Um, and so it, depending on what you roll, it's going to depend on how this is played out and what happens here. And then you've got your charts of how you're going to keep track of things. And then you make your decisions on this and how what, what you're trying to do here on the uh, map board. You are playing against the um, playing against the Russians here. And so there's di there's different ones. So here's balance attack. So if you want to play this and mark this up, feel free. And then you'll have to, you'll either have to erase this or buy a new book. I'm sure uh, Worthington would oblige you to buy as many copies of this as you want. For me, um, I either, you, you can put uh, some kind of tape or you know, some kind of film over this or, or, um, 
plexiglass on this or some kind of you know markable clear thing that so you're not ruining the book I, I or or make copies and you can do it the old-fashioned way and just make a copy uh, you can use the, leave this here because you can read that in the book and just make a copy of this page and then mark off mark off what you need to mark off on this page I usually make copies but I have tried plexiglass and I've also tried like some see-through stuff that you can mark on without damaging the book. And so I can have multiple uses, but there, each of these are different scenarios. Like this is, this here, as you can see is balanced attack here and deals with this map. And then you've got drive on Moscow. You've got destroy Leningrad. You've got finish revenge. Conquer the Ukraine. That's topical. Balance attack. And then there's more drive on Moscow, but this is at a different strength level. So this is going to be a little bit tougher. So it's not your it's not your original drive on Moscow. This is going to be a little bit tougher. And I think they all go that way. So you're going to have some of the same scenarios, but they're going to be at different difficulty levels. So you get a little bit more of a challenge. Um, so you can replay the lower difficulty levels to your heart content, or you can start ratcheting it up and taking on higher difficulty levels or go back and forth. So th th there is uh, quite a bit of gameplay here, and you just need to figure out how you want to preserve the book. You know, do you want to write in the book in your race, or do you want to, you know, use something over it, uh, or how you want to do it? Uh, you know, you might even be able to put markers these boxes look pretty small so it'd be kind of hard to put markers plus i think you scratch off stuff or mark on here like for reserves so it might be best to make copies or, or figure out some way to mark without damaging the book so but that is what you uh, get i'm going to turn it this way here just so you can kind of see some of the different uh they're just different there's they're the same scenarios but with different difficulty levels so that means this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to ratchet up and the AI is going to pose different challenges for you uh, over time as you play the game. So you've got five different levels of each of these scenarios. There's, there's you know, five or so scenarios here and then you've got five different levels. Hey, five times five is 25. So maybe that's where they're coming up with 25 battles. You know, your math may vary and they told me there'd be no math. Anyway, so um, there you have it. Uh, you're going to have these five different scenarios done at different difficulty levels. And this is a strategic game in nature, so it's different than some of their static map games that they've done in the past, or even their naval game. And I think they have some other naval games in the work, you know, that uh, piggyback off of Bismarck, uh, their Bismarck game, which was their first one. But um, there you have it. So that's what you get in a book. And then you have here at the back, you have the designer notes. And then you're going to have a log where you can keep track of how you did, you know, uh, on, you know, the one star games versus the two star up to five star. You can tr keep track of wins, losses, victory points, uh, medals and dates and stuff like that. So it's just a way to, you know, log your progress or see how you're doing in this game as you're going along. So there you have it. This is the latest and greatest from Worthington Publishing uh, that is a continuing in their line of book game. They say it's an original book game. So, you know, you've got a lot to choose from now from, you know, medieval, Napoleonic, Civil War, American Civil War, uh, World War II naval, and now World War II on the land, on the Eastern Front, or the Russian Front. I, with all that, I need me another sip. There you have it. This is the, the uh, I don't know if I'm one of the earlier ones out, but again, I just got this. I ordered it the minute I saw it on, um, I think I saw a post on Worthington and said, I got to get it because it fits into, well, I like these games. I like solitaire games. I like portable games. I like simple games. I like different topics. I like different mechanics. <laughs> what is not to like? Anyway, so I had to get this and uh, get it out to you as soon as I got it out of my uh, Amazon bag to show you. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think about this game? How does this look? How's, what, what do you think about this compared to the other games in the series? Uh, you want to get this? Do you not want to get it? Uh, what do you think about it? Love to start a dialogue and know what you think. 
Um, you know, I'm going to do a piece on, now that I've got this, this is the last one, <laughs> barring any more that I find. This is the, the I'm far enough, far, far enough along in covering all these different types of uh, war game books and board game books and book games that I'm going to do kind of a big overall exploration on all the different ones that I've I've covered and seen and played and, and looked at and, and talked about and kind of maybe categorize them and talk a little bit about them more from a from a high level of you know pros and cons. Um so now that I got this I can I can now do that now. Um but uh love to know what you guys think about this. I mean th these these aren't cheap. I mean they're they average around I mean you might be able to get them a little cheaper but when they're right off Amazon they're right around just under 30 bucks, I think, on average. Um, you know, they're good quality. They're, uh, as you, you can tell from the art and the graphics, uh, nothing's been spared there. It's not just your same old black and white. Now, some of the other board game books uh, or war game books that I've covered, you know, don't have as much color or they're not, you know, as, as aesthetically, you know, pleasing as some of this. But, you know, there, there, there's a lot of game in those other games as well. Um, so, you know, what what are you paying for? You know, what how much gameplay do you want to get out of it? And, you know, what are you looking for? You, and so it really is going to come down to some of the mechanics and gameplay and graphics versus, you know, some of the gameplay and, you know, maybe not the same level of graphics, but um, maybe there's more gameplay there. Maybe there's more challenging, challenges there. So it's all what you're looking for. And again, I'm going to try to do a piece that covers a lot of those different aspects. So everybody can kind of feel, uh, get a feel for what they like, what they don't like, what they want to stay away from, what's something they want to go buy and, and, and gobble up and get on their shelf and get to the table and start playing. So anyway, uh, that's what I have for you today. Uh, again, love to know your thoughts on any of these topics, whether you like this, don't like it, what you, what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Love to see a dialogue because I might use those comments as I kind of do my overall exploration of this genre or niche or whatever you want to call it of our hobby. Uh, again, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you for sharing a cup of whatever you are sharing with, well, with yourself, whatever you're drinking. I'll have what you're drinking. Um and, you know, I know your time is precious, so any amount of time you spend with me is is greatly appreciated. I, I really do, uh, I really do mean that. I have a better perspective of time over the last few months, and um, it is precious, and um, I do appreciate any time you spend, and, uh, and hopefully you're enjoying this. If you keep coming back, you're enjoying it, and if you're not, tell me why. Tell me why not. I like, I, I like to hear. And if you like something, tell me that too. I, I need to keep repeating and doing more of it. Anyway, thanks all and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.